Hey guys, Bill Jeffy here, insurance beer snob, back at you for the first time in a uh, number of months. It's been far too long. We are in uh, mid-August already, if you can believe that, and with the summer months comes summer vacations. And keeping with the local theme, I thought I would go with two of the uh, local beach communities and their breweries that might correspond with them. And in our office here, we have a little debate on which is better, the Jersey Shore or the Delaware beaches. Uh, me being from Delaware, I might be a little bit biased towards them. But the two beers I've selected today for us are uh, a beer out of uh, Milton, Delaware, Dogfish Head, which we've had on before. Uh, this is their Positive Contact, which is a collaboration beer. I'll get into more about that when I open it. And the other one is from Flying Fish, which is, uh, I think it's out of Camden, New Jersey. But this is from their Exit Series. Uh, and, you know, obviously the Jersey Turnpike is notorious for their exits and the Atlantic City Expressway and all them. This is their Exit 1 uh, Bayshore Oyster Stout. So I've got a stout from Jersey and I've got a uh, blended beer from uh, from Delaware. Should be pretty interesting and we're going to crack these open and uh, attack them, get into the reviews. Thanks guys. Okay guys, we're back. We've got the uh, Dogfish Head Positive Contact Pour here. So basically a little bit of background about uh, Dogfish Head, again, we've had them on before, Milton, Delaware, it's fairly close to the Delaware um, shore points, if you will. Uh, basically, what they've done in the past um, have been collaboration beers uh, with certain musical artists. So they did a uh, collaboration, not with Miles Davis, but uh, for the anniversary of one of Miles Davis's albums, they did a uh, collaboration for a Pearl Jam uh, beer, and they also did one for... Um, Robert Johnson is a blues artist. Now this one, Positive Contact, is with Dan the Automator and Deltron 3030, which I guess I'm not very familiar with, but is a, a hip hop group that came out in the late 90s. This is kind of uh, almost an anniversary beer uh, you know, for them, honoring them. And he helped in the brewing process, picking out ingredients and being there the day they brewed it, uh, and so on and so forth. So this one came out a few months back. I have had it before. Um, don't remember a ton about it. it didn't. didn't uh, didn't say that I didn't like it, but just don't remember a lot. It's got a lot of interesting ingredients that a lot of Dogfish Head beers do, and I'm just going to read some of those off for you. Uh, this is an ale brewed with apple cider and spices, uh, and a positive combination of Fuji cider, slow roasted farro. It's got a little bit of cayenne and some fresh cilantro. So it sounds really, really interesting. Let's see if it actually uh, correlates to what you got in your glass here. So I uh, poured this one out. I only gave myself a little bit, but... It doesn't really have a style, um, and online it actually said it was an imperial wit beer, an imperial wheat beer, if you would. Um, so imperial being that the alcohol is beefed up, but the wit beers are usually in that 5% range. This is actually a little bit higher, it's, it's 9, uh, so it is packing a little bit of a wallop. Um, basically it looks like a wit beer would. It's hazy, cloudy, uh, uh, yellowy, orange color, more yellow uh, than orange. Um, got a faint white head that's leaving, uh, you know, maybe some lacing bits, but not a ton. Um, it's got good carbonation. This dogfish head glass actually has uh, abrasions on the bottom of it that promote uh, the carbonation bubbles from coming up, and it does you know, help produce a little bit more for you. Um, Smell-wise, you're getting a lot of that whipped beer character. So with the, with the Belgian whipped beer, you're using a Belgian yeast strain, which adds spices. Um, you'll, you'll get a lot of coriander, uh, you'll get a lot of uh, peppery notes with the Belgian yeast strain. Uh, it's very pronounced in those types of beers, so if you're familiar with them and you like them, that's one of the characteristics of those types of beers, and that's what I'm getting in this. Now the thing that is added um, that I am picking up on the nose is some of that fresh pressed um, apple cider character. Um, you know, Fuji apples, I'm not really familiar with how it's different than a Granny Smith or something that we get around here. Um, maybe it's just a more pungent flavor or a pungent flavor and smell. Um, but I am pulling that from here and this is still cold. I did pull this out of the refrigerator so I think as it comes up it's probably going to be a little bit more pronounced. Um, and shockingly, um, I'm getting a little bit of that pepper. So maybe that cayenne's coming through a little bit, and it's not just the Belgian yeast strain that's providing the pepper note, and maybe more. I mean, it's it's very pleasant. Um, it's a good summer beer. Shockingly, for a nine percent beer, you'd be uh, pretty amazed at that. Um, definitely getting that, that Belgian character, um, getting the, uh, the apple too, the apple cider sweetness and, uh, the spice when, when usually when spices are used in beers, you're going to get them on the back end. And I do get that. Now, is it crazy hot? 
Cayenne's just a little kick. It's it's not like you know your habaneros or your or your peppers that you're using in the brewing process that will add a little bit more bite and almost make it unpleasant. It's just a little bit of heat in the back of the throat. Um, cilantro, I know it's in there. Uh, don't taste it. I wish I could. I really like cilantro. Um, the uh, the thing about this one. Um, that is amazing is that it's 9% alcohol and I'm not tasting it at all. Again, I'm going to come back to that. Uh, it's really, really, really um, an easy session beer for being that high in alcohol. Um, Mouthfeel wise, it is, uh, it, it, I would say it's light to medium. You know, I, I was initially thinking it's definitely going to be a medium bodied beer, but it's more, it's definitely more light. Yeah, and I think if I let this warm up a little bit more, I'd probably get more of that apple cider sweetness. Maybe I'd get some of the other flavors, but right now being cold, the Belgian yeast, um, the, uh, the, the, the little peppery note from the cayenne, and the, uh, the apple are there. No alcohol burn at all. Um, you know, if I was going to go rating-wise on this, uh, you know, being that their collaborations in the past um, have been kind of hit or miss, I, I put this on more of the hit side. I really did enjoy this, uh, this time being able to taste a little bit more. I had it last time just in a taster portion and I don't remember hating it. So um, that's two times liking it for me and I think it's something that you guys should check out. It's still available. Initially it came out and was in a box set that was, uh, you know, you had to buy six bottles and you got a record and all this stuff, but it was fairly expensive. They broke out the boxes now and you can buy this in Delaware and Pennsylvania and, um, you know, surrounding markets for like 12 bucks, 12.99 or something like that. I definitely I picked it up in Delaware for that amount. So um, for this one, rating wise, if I'm going to go on my, um, you know, I started doing a point scale. Um, I'm going to give it a 90. So it's you know an A or a B, bordering on both. Um, 90 is pretty good for this beer, and uh, definitely something for you guys to check out. So what we're going to do next in our uh, beach and shore series is move over to Jersey and take a look at a beer from Flying Fish that uh, Exit One uh, Bay Shore Oyster Stout. Thanks. Man. got the uh, Flying Fish uh, Exit 1 Bay, Bay Shore Oyster Stout Pour here. And um, you know, just a little bit of insight about their brewery. Much like Dogfish Head and a lot of breweries, they started in the mid-90s. I believe they're 95, and Dogfish Head is 96. That's when you saw a lot of them start to pop up. Um, they are, I believe, right over in, they're in Cherry Hill. I mentioned Camden earlier, but it's Cherry Hill. So right across the bridge um, from Delaware and PA. Uh, basically, I have a whole line of beers. This Exit Series is something they're doing uh, bigger, bigger style beers for and uh, releasing them throughout the course of a few years. I believe this bottle is a couple of years old. It might have came out the fall of 2010 or the fall of 2009. Uh, it was given to me as a gift. Uh, I really don't know the age on it. This beer over here, the Positive Contact, just going back to this one, was released uh, and bottled in, um, in the spring of 2012. So that's brand new and this is a few years old, but that's fine for stouts. Uh, so the oyster stout, again, is not a common thing you'd see, so you're like, oh, well, there's going to be a, a seafood or a fishy or a, an oystery smell in there. Not to be scared of, but they do add them to the barrel in the brewing process. It's really for the uh, the shells and the minerality that it adds. I think it adds like a creamy texture to the stout. I've only had a handful of them, but what I've read and uh, you know what I remember from them is that you know it doesn't put off any off-putting uh, flavors of, of the sea or anything, maybe a touch if it's fresh. Um, but really it's just for the creaminess. Uh, this they usually used in English dry stouts, like your Guinness or, um, or some of those other varieties that you might know that are more commonplace. Um, but just get back to this beer, uh, uh, pour out wise, it was, uh, you know, stout-like, you know, a really dark, uh, dark, dark brown. I'm not gonna say it was completely pitch black, the blackest beer I've ever seen, but I'm not getting a lot of light through that. It's a, it's a pretty dark brown with some reddish hues on the corners. Um, not a lot of head on it. Um, I, you know, I don't know if it's bottle conditioned or what, but it is a few years old, so that's, you know, that's the case. That's the case. I'm getting a little uh, you know, ring of tan here. Um, seems to still be carbonated, which is a good thing. Um, not overly carbonated. You don't want that on your stouts anyway. Um, Smell-wise, I am getting you know a lot of roast, a lot of uh, you know roasted malt character on this one, um, and you're getting that deep chocolate um, that you know comes with the malts that you're using in style. So I'm getting um, you know some chocolate and also some um, definitely some coffee notes. Um, and just so you know, no no oystery, no minerality, no, none of that stuff off, off the nose. Um, 
you know, basically just smells like a really easy drinking stout. And hopefully that's what it is. The alcohol content, if I didn't give you that already, is only seven on this. I kind of went backwards. The, the lighter colored beer you'd think would be lighter. You know, it's the misconception with people that, you know, this color would add alcohol content. But this lighter beer here was nine and this dark beer here is seven. So just so you know, um, take a sip of this guy. Cheers. That's actually really, really pleasant. Um, again, a very, when I say sessionable, you could sit down and drink more than one of these. A very sessionable stout. Um, it's not gonna knock your pants off um, in, um, in the alcohol content. I'm not tasting it at all. I'm getting some really nice, on the back end now, um, roasted character. That, um, that roasted grain's really coming through and some, uh, some of that really, it's not the darkest cough, coffee you've ever had, but some really roasted coffee greens, um, that kind of flavor off, but Chocolate is really nice. Um, it is very, uh, very smooth. Um, you know, maybe that the the, uh, the oysters help with some of the the creaminess, um, but it's it's really really smooth. Yeah, I've got no complaints about this one. It's really really tasty. And when I dug my nose in there that second time, um, I kind of did feel you know pull back a little bit of. Um, I'm not gonna say the ocean, but maybe some like some of that 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 oyster character that came out with the with the shells and the oysters being used in it, because it definitely had a, a you know a little different um, diff little different nose when I dug in. And again, a lot of beers are gonna open up just like a red wine would with a little bit of, of warmth on them. This I've let sit out a little bit longer than this one, um, but still it could go longer. The stouts could be drank more close to room temperature, and um, this one's no exception. It would probably open up even more and and be even more pleasant. Um, but you know, if we're going to get into a mouthfeel on this, um, you know, a lot of stouts are going to be full bodied. Um, this is between a medium and a full body. It's not as full as a Russian Imperial stout where there's, you know, even more just voluminous amounts of malt used to, you know, crank that alcohol content up and crank those sugars up to produce that much alcohol. Um, this is more of a, a really easy drinking stout that you could have, like I said, one or two of and not, and not feel like it's going to end your day. Um, I'm going to give this one actually higher marks than the positive contact, you know, just because of that. You know, I really, I like an easy drinking stout. I like something that I can have, you know, more than one and, and, and not have to worry about my safety. Um, so I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go 92 on this. I, I really, really think they did a good job. I know I've had um, some other beers from their Exit series. Uh, they make Exit, Exit 4 is a triple, a Belgian triple that's really, really tasty that they've actually moved from these big 750 milliliter bottles into a, uh, you know, a 12 ounce uh, four pack. So it's a little more accessible and you don't need to drink the whole thing in one sitting. Um, and hopefully they move this one or something like that because it'd be great to see in a smaller bottle. Um, but, uh, you know, just so we go back to our whole concept here, we've got the, uh, the, the Delaware versus the, the Jersey Shore for our summertime uh, theme in our office. And uh, you know, it is a Friday right now, people are gonna be heading out, and I believe uh, we've got a few members heading to Jersey. And uh, with that said, I think that the, uh, the Jersey beer wins today. I'm not very happy about that, that answer, but I'm gonna go with the Flying Fish Exit One, Bay Oyster Stout, if you see it, pick it up. Uh, again, these bottles usually run in the same range, in that 12 to $15 bottle range. Um, this guy, again, is 12 to 13 bucks. Both are accessible. I believe this is still accessible, but the other Exit Series definitely are, because I've seen them out. So if you want to, uh, if you see them, pick them up, definitely give them a whirl, um, definitely support local craft breweries in your area, and that's what we're trying to do with the show is, uh, you know, the states that we write insurance in, I'm going to try to have them on the show uh, more and more often. I think we're going to try to bring these shows to you more and more often as well. So we'll get back at it, and uh, you guys have a great rest of the summer, and uh, getting into the fall, and we'll see you in another beer review very soon. Drive safely. Cheers.